I'm very happy to announce the next panel. Um, it's about female participation in the music biz, and it has an amazing t title which says, when she talks, here's a revolution. And it's about how the world is in a male-dominated uh, business. And uh, myself, I'm from uh, working in IT, and I can relate Sing, sing with some of the things. I'm really curious how it is for you, and um, I think we have to change things in this world. It shouldn't be man-centric. It shouldn't be. It should be open for everybody. And I'm really happy to have this amazing woman here for this panel. And uh, I wanted to introduce them really quickly to you. We have uh, Alisa Tretau, which will do the moderation today. We have Asia Tomasi, <laughs> Emilia Miguez, Shermin Savala. We have Sandix, who, who's part of the reason why we have this panel. She's one of the ones who started the whole idea. And we have um, Yala and Fina, who will do some performance for us. So. Let's be curious, and um, while every single one of them got a nice applause from you, and thank you for this, because I really like that, we'll give you a big applause now for everybody, so we'll start and have fun. Okay, thank you for this nice introduction. Um, I will speak in English, it's not my mother language, uh, so please excuse if it sounds silly. You can also laugh a little bit, but not too much, because then I will get confused. Um, okay, so the panel is called When She Talks, I Hear the Revolution. It's a Riot Girl song from Bikini Kill, Rebel Girl. Um, and yeah, I don't know, maybe later we will also talk a little bit about the Riot Girl movement, because maybe it can be an inspiration for today's female non-binary music uh, this people as well, who knows. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do in the next 80 minutes or so. So, um, we, uh, Zandix, invited us to do this panel today. Thank you very much. And um, beforehand, we asked, we sent out a questionnaire with some questions. You will soon see them, see them on the... Um, screen as well, about how it is to be a female non-binary artist or booker or event manager. And out of these experiences, we made some scenes that you will also um, see or hear. And also we invited three professionals to discuss with us on stage. So this is Asia Tomasi, who is also part of the booking team of the Kulturkosmos Müritz e.V. So she's also responsible for booking for the Fusion Festival. And next to her is Shermin Sawala, who is a booker working between Jordan and Europe. And she founded uh, an own booking agency, which is called Malahi Entertainment Incorporation. Yes, got it right. <laughs> and then we have Emil Yamiges from Leipzig, who is a co-founder of the EFZ, uh, Institute for Zukunft. It's a club and also with other people founded the Fu Female Future Collective. Featuring females, sorry. Oh, I got almost everything right. Um, yeah, and Jala and Fina are um, DJs and actresses, so we are really happy that they join us today on stage. And Zandix, uh, as already was said, she's part of the contact, uh, content team, invited us. She's also a DJ, event manager, works in Mensch Meyer Club and in other contexts that try to combine politics and music. Okay, so this is us, uh, and we will try to collect our experiences here on stage and also strategies, how to cope with the male-dominated music biz. And in the end, we would also like to do this with you, okay? So we will have a Q&A time where we would love to hear your questions, but also inspirations and strategies. I hope I did not forget anything. Ah, yeah, okay. So um, we talk about female and non-binary people here. Maybe sometimes we forget to mention the one or the other, but we try to be solidaric and include everyone who feels they are included in this. Um, yes, so 
maybe you can put on the three questions. Ah, no, sorry. Yeah, uh, before we go into the scenes, I would like to ask you three guys here in the comfy sofa, comfy couch, what exactly you are doing and how you end up doing it. Okay, you've got a mic here, yeah. Okay, I'm Asia Tomasi, I come from Italy, and I started to work for uh, Culture Cosmos in 2016. Um, at the start, I booked only a few acts, maybe 20 names, uh, 2016. But then this year was more on my plate, and uh, I, I said, oh, yeah, sure, I'm gonna do it. And so I ended up booking 45 names. So it was a big uh, challenge for me because uh, I'm not even so experienced in uh, festival bookings, but it was super fun and was a lot of creative work and it was a lot of people uh, helping me in this process and I had really big support. So, and I have my booking agency as well and uh, I'm concentrating very much on one artist that is becoming pretty famous and yeah, it's loved. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Shermin Sawalha. Um, I produce, book, and manage uh, artists and content and shows, mainly in Jordan and the Middle East, uh, sometimes in Northern Africa, sometimes in the Gulf, sometimes in Europe, sometimes wherever the artist takes us, either they come in or we send musicians and artists outside. Um, but I was, before that, I used to dance for a living and when I moved to Jordan, there was no place to dance, so I had to start creating spaces for people to have fun. And eventually, the last thing I do is dance, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like you told, I worked in EFZ um, before. I was night manager and did artist care and also PR stuff. And later on, I organized workshops and lectures also in EFZ because we have also like this political part. And from this, I started also featuring females. Now it's featuring feminism. We changed the name uh, a few weeks, weeks ago because we want to include more um, people because some don't feel like females. And so we wanted to invite everybody and think it's important to fight for feminism together. So that's what I wanted to say about this, so it's fine. And yeah, that's why I'm here today because for, I'm in this collective and I think we talked a lot about it and thought a lot about the things we will discuss today, so let's see. <laughs> cool, thank you. Um, we also would like to give you a little overview about the topic that we are dealing here with today, right? Because um, the thesis for this panel is um, yeah, the situation of female non-binary artists in the music biz and why it is that although in the party scene, maybe in the political left party scene, it became more important in the last years to feature more female DJs and music artists. It still is really not um, equal yeah, in the reality. And so now we would like to do a little fact check. Hey, welcome you. Um, we just do a little overview. It's, um, it's a study from Female Pressure Network. I'm also part of that since a couple of years. It's founded 20 years ago from Electric Indigo. It's uh, not really a group, it's more like a network and everybody uh, who identifies female can join. Um, DJs, artists, people working in the music biz, promoters, label heads, whatever. And um, the, uh, there are volunteers around the world that uh, count festivals, labels, or, mm, uh, in numbers. It's always uh, female, <coughs> male, and mixed. Means if you have one female and uh, one male, then you have a mixed act. So that's how it's counted. And I have to say that it's not a scientific research. It's only like something to understand uh, what we are talking about. Mm. Yeah, so this is the first one. There are three in total. This is from 2013. And uh, I hope you can see it that uh, there were counted labels and festivals. And there is a percentage. Um, the females have 5% um, in the label business and uh, male 87 mixed 8. Festivals, it's a bit better it's uh, 8.4 and male is uh, 83 and 7 mixed. 
so it's not so much. <laughs> Festivals, um, same year. It's um, female 10%, male 82.5% uh, and 7% uh, 5 uh, mixed. So then, two years later, um, let's see how that developed. Festivals again. Um, female is blue, it's 10.8, and uh, male is 82.3, and mixed six. So mixed stays a bit like it is, and festival female also still. So not really a lot changed. Clubs were also, uh, they had a look at it, they counted it. Um, female is 9% roughly, and 88% uh, male. Mixed is even not uh, really counted here. Two years later, now we have only the festivals we have a look at. Um, female part is 15, so one third more, 15.7. And male is 77.2. Mixed is 6.5. Point five, so it stays the same more or less. So we are just talking about the male goes down, female goes up thing. Uh, I wanted to give you also this uh, quote. It's in German um, that I found. Um, Künstlerinnen wollen sie alle gern verpflichten, sagen die Festivalbooker, doch der Frauenanteil bei den 20 größten Multigenre-Festivals liegt laut einer, einer Erhebung der Webseite Pitchfork Media 2018 gerade einmal bei 19 Prozent. Im vergangenen Jahr waren es 14. Und äh, hier wird nochmal Bezug genommen, uh, they, they refer back to the female pressure study. It's a little bit different how they count, but more or less we're talking about the 15 percent more or less right now. That's from me right now. Thank you. Yeah, uh, for me, this was really surprising to read the figures. I really thought it would be much more outweighed, and that's really basically the reason why we meet here today to discuss about this, uh, how, why it is like this, and what we could do to change it. Before we go into the discussion, I would invite uh, Jala and Fine to um, read for us the first experiences that we collected from our little survey that we made. Maybe you can um, show the questions. So this, these were the three simple questions that we sent to female non-binary artists and bookers um, and asked th them to answer. Um, the first refers to da daily working situations, what happens uh, as being a female booker or artist. Um, the second is, yeah, we asked for the personal worst situation of sexism or discrimination they experienced. And then we also asked for future strategies. And some, not all, of the uh, answers we want to present to you today, they are anonymized. And the first block of answers is like um, the routine life of a female non-binary artist. Like we follow her for one night through the club. Yeah. My DJ name is not explicit female. I occur that I join the artist dinner or backstage and I'm not greeted at others or at all, since they think I'm the girlfriend friend of someone. As soon as they find out I'm an artist, maybe even a headliner, people start being very friendly. Sometimes they're, they're surprised and might excuse themselves for the mistake. This also happens at the door. Me entering together with male DJs. They're complimented inside while the bouncer tells me to wait or stop outside. When arriving with other male DJs, these situa situations are more likely to happen. The intention is automatically on the male DJs. The presence of female DJs seems less natural. Mir passiert es oft als weibliche DJ, wenn ich meine Technik aufbauen möchte, dass der männliche DJ, der gerade spielt, mir ist es noch nicht mit einer weiblichen DJ passiert, mir einfach ungefragt hilft, zum Beispiel meine Kabel einfach an den Mixer anschließt oder was häufig auch passiert, dass Typen einfach ankommen und ungefragt, während ich spiele, an den Mixer gehen und an der Lautstärke oder den Effekten herumspielen. 
Ich habe mir nun die Strategie ausgedacht, dass ich in dem Moment, in dem mir das passiert, nichts sage, da ich mich auf mein Set konzentrieren und mich nicht aus der Konzentration bringen lassen möchte, falls es zu einer Diskussion ausartet und nach meinem Set den Menschen darauf anspreche und ihm meine Meinung dazu sage. Eine andere Idee, die ich mit anderen weiblichen DJs hatte, war, eine kleine Karte zu gestalten, auf der sowas steht wie, hättest du das auch getan, wenn ich einen Schwanz hätte? Und dem Typen einfach diese Karte gebe, falls sowas wieder passiert, während ich auflege. Dann muss ich nicht diskutieren und meine Laune geht nicht den Bach runter. Auf der Rückseite der Karte sollte dann auch eine Erklärung zu dem Thema stehen. The worst situation happened some years ago. I was already a professional DJ for years and played in one of the biggest clubs in Berlin, where I used to play from time to time. I arrived at the DJ booth in the morning. First, the artist care asked me or told me to leave the DJ booth. He needed space to work. It's okay, but the tone was very unfriendly. The other, the other DJ was still playing. So I, so I let the technician do his job and waited next to the DJ booth. As he, was, as he was done, I introduced myself to the DJ playing before. He greeted me and then asked me to get drinks from the bar. No problem. Did that for other artists before. As I come back, I wanted to start setting up my tech stuff to play. He simply let, didn't let me reach the mixer or gave me space, even through the technician before already set up the turntables. So he knew I was supposed to start. We, are, we were already around 20 minutes over time. As I insist, the DJ called me Schätzchen and Ach komm, geh doch an die Bar, ich spiel hier, was willst du denn? I was shocked and didn't know what to do. I called for the artist care technician who was so cool and unfriendly that he couldn't or better say didn't want to solve the problem in a good way. He started yelling at the other DJ to leave. The DJ started yelling back. But that had nothing to do with supporting me. It was like watching two cooks fighting. The situation was a bit out of control. Then somebody called the girlfriend of the DJ who was working at the entrance of the club. She told him, She talked to him and after a while I was allowed to set up my stuff. She apologized in his name for his action. I started my set around 40 minutes late and shaking. Next day I wrote everything down and sent it to the booker that booked me. No reaction. I asked again if he received my mail. I never got an answer. What annoys me the most is if guys keep staring at me without a movement while playing or when they touch the mixer and try to push some buttons, push the volume up, etc. But the most shocking moment for me was when I played together with another male colleague. I was mixing and was holding the headphones in my hands when the artist care came with the turntables for the next DJ. He needed space and yelled at me that I should leave the DJ booth. After I confronted him, he just realized that I was the DJ in the mix. It was quite embarrassing for him and he apologized. Still, I was so disturbed and needed some minutes to get concentrated again. It was ugly to notice that I wasn't counted as a DJ, but as a groupie. I would bet that the artist care would have looked two times if I would have been a man. No hard feelings. Artist care also have stressful moments, but it shows how discriminating unprofessional workers or awareless people in the work field can influence women working without being aware of it. Das Schlimmste ist, das angegraben oder sogar angefasst zu werden hinterm DJ-Pult. Denn da kann man da nicht weg und muss sich meistens Hilfe ranpfeifen. Bei einer alltäglicheren Situation wüsste ich mir selbst zu helfen. Aber wenn man auf einem Quadratmeter gefangen ist, braucht man Unterstützung. Zudem gehen die Gagenvorstellungen männlicher Booker bei weiblichen DJs rapide nach unten. Was soll das? Das nervt. Ich habe zusammen mit einer Freundin aufgelegt. Da kam ein Typ an und sagt, wow, dafür, dass ihr Mädels seid, macht ihr echt coole Mucke. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks. <lacht> That's just a collection of some of the answers that we received um, for, yeah, as reply. Do you have similar situations to add maybe from your working life and maybe even strategies when something similar happened to you? I mean, you sometimes you have different work fields, you're maybe not behind the desks, but you still deal like in the same work field. Yeah, so I would love to hear some 
thoughts about this from you. Yeah, you have one mic, so you can. Um, yes, I also know all these experiences, also from my collective, we talk about this. And I DJ it also sometimes, and oh, there are so many issues you told about and strategies. I think at first it's good to share these experiences so that you know that you're not alone with it because women often feel that's their fault and maybe it just happens to me. So that's good that we all here together and talk about these experiences. And yeah, I would say like if someone is really annoying during the DJ set, you can really take off the music and make this clear because it can't work. It's really, really hard that it still happens, not only at the DJ desk, everywhere. And I think we should really, really make it um, visible and loud. So yeah, that would be one strategy. Uh, sorry, I want to ask, the strategy could be that in that moment of harassment to just stop playing and yes. say like, I'm not going to play in this uh, kind of... It's a really tough thing, but mm -hmm. just to make it clear, yes. Yeah. Because it's, they told it's hard to get somebody there, so you can push down the music and... Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting idea, definitely. Yes, yeah. maybe. Cool, thanks. Um, well, it's a bit different from... <laughs> Where, where, where I am in the world, uh, it's a bit different because when we want to talk about feminism, we're actually just talking about women rights to start with. And, um, or in the Middle East, it's a bit still more complicated than it is here, you know? But at the same time, coincidentally, a lot of the people that are producing shows and festivals and wedding type of things are mainly female in the industry, in the Middle East. And all the technical crew and assists are male. Now, the artists, you know, it's similar numbers. It just depends on the artist. But um, I think at the beginning when I started doing work like that, I just had to, like, come in and be like, this is, this is me, I'm the boss, this is going on, this is what we're going to do, and this is it. And if you have any problems, you know, you just have to kind of step up to the same way they step, step up to you. You have to be just the same. Um, and... Um, at the same time, st I, I personally uh, forget the whole gender topic because if I'm going to keep thinking about it, it's going to manifest into everything I personally do and feel. So I, I just try to live and make the best of how I pr produce or book or manage or whatever I do uh, or live or drive or whatever, but uh, making sure that I'm not offending anyone. As long as I do that, I think it'll be... Thanks. Uh, as a booker, I don't know, I feel uh, sometimes I have to act uh, like a man or be hard or negotiate in, ha in a hard way and reply to the email in a very hard way because otherwise I'm not going to get what I want. And uh, I don't know, I, f I think, for example, I'm working together with a colleague, he's a male colleague. And in his case, uh, most of the time, like when uh, he's asking for something, he doesn't have to push it as I have to do. Um, I, I'm not sure there is actually a, a real solution to this, unfortunately. It's just a matter of uh, probably uh, being able to explain your reason very well. So I always try to uh, negotiate in a very clear way, transparent way, go in detail. Uh, don't force myself to be what I'm not. So don't force myself to be the man. But trying to, in my way, respect my personality. So I think it is very important. And no one should uh, be someone that is not. OK, thank you so much. Um, yes, more applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as you now see, it's quite different, the fields that you work in and also the point in the music with where you stand and make your decisions and also what kind of situations uh, you confront. And also this is the next block of um, lecture that we're going to read to you is like what we heard before was mainly experiences from um, DJs. And now we're going to go more into the booking offices and into the field of promotion and event management because we think that this is actually the 
sphere of the abyss where the decisions are being made, so where maybe we can also change the structure, you know, because the sexism ends up in the, behind the decks, what we just heard before, but the decisions are being made somewhere else. So now we're going to hear some uh, typical situations from this field of booking and promotion. I get calls uh, of bookers or promoters at least three times a year telling me that they want to start a project or an event where only women will be behind the decks. My impression is that they expect applause and my commitment. Since this is not a very new idea and I'm not sure if it is helpful to make only girls night, they seem to be disappointed by my holding back. Of course, I tell them that, it's not, that it is a nice idea in general, but depends on the intention, name, setting and description of the event, if this is an empowering move or not. I don't understand why the involvement of women in the lineups cannot be a regular, normal, natural thing. It's a little annoying that for many friends and colleagues, I seem to be the feminist DJ or whom they contact in upfront instead of just doing it. Mir fällt auf, dass es im Moment oft zum guten, zum guten Ton in unserer Szene gehört, auch weibliche DJs einzuladen oder wenigstens einen weiblichen Act auf dem Line-Up stehen zu haben, aber die Veranstaltenden nicht wirklich dahinter stehen, welche Acts zu fördern, weibliche Acts, Acts zu fördern. I remain annoyed that often about five or six times a year I am still asked to playing for free for events because they are promoting female DJs as if it was a charity event. Women are not a charity for fuck's sake and the best way to promote female DJs is not to employ them, not ask them to play for free like the opportunity to be on stage is a gift on its own. I think it has been unfortunately internalized that women need help. So even women organizing event come up with the idea that not playing is okay. We don't need help. We need to be taken seriously as equal workers. <laughs> Describing the most annoying situations, I would mention the tendency of some bookers to organize only female lineups for a party from now on, and then instead of always trying to create a balanced lineup. Still, only female lineups are okay for me, but sometimes they get labeled in a strange way. For example, one time a guy called his party Hanem Corp because he was the only male playing, subversive, but still somehow discriminating, and with the notion of misunderstood support. Then still sometimes it seems that women play on smaller floors, guys at the bigger floors or prime times. What also happens concerning the advertisement, if you play a showcase with your crew, the party, sometimes get introduced like the gentlemen of the crew will play for you. Many bookers, organizers still forgot that there, were, that there also exist female DJs and they, that they should watch their language and get well informed about the DJ constellations. And of course happening every now and then, male bookers and organizers who think they have to greet and treat you too kind by touching, embracing, etc. That means way too much and close. So you never met them before in your life. Ähm, jetzt folgt eine Beispielsituation zwischen Booker und einer weiblichen DJ. Hey X, hast du Lust auf Club XY aufzulegen? Bisher sind schon Kerl 1, Kerl 2, Kerl 3 und Kerl 4 dabei. Ich habe keine Zeit. Ah, okay. Fällt dir noch eine andere Frau ein? Es geht bei dieser Anfrage also explizit nicht um meine Musik oder die Mucke von anderen Frauen. Es geht um irgendeine Frau, die da auf dem Line-Up steht. Ich wurde eine Woche vor einem Festival gefragt, bei dem ich mich vorher zum Auflegen beworben hatte und auch schon öfters gespielt habe, ob ich nicht Freitagnacht auflegen wolle. Es würden in der Nacht bis jetzt nur Typen spielen und es wäre toll, noch eine Frau im Line-Up zu haben. Allerdings wäre es schön, wenn ich vielleicht was anderes spielen könnte als sonst, in Klammern Techno, da der Typ vorher Kumbia spielen wird und das dann nicht passen würde. Vielleicht besser so funky Disco Sound. 
What happens very, very often is that male booking colleagues I met somehow ask me for a female headliner last minute. They say they already have 90% of the booking made and now they realize no or only one woman in the lineup, not talking about trans or non-binary anyway. And nowadays it's important to at least try to have a balanced lineup that you can say in the end, well, we tried. So he fix it, so he tries to fix it now last minute. Next question me. Okay, what a pity. You are thinking about what you are thinking about now where it's too late. What happens very, very often ah, 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 okay. Sorry. Okay, situation. Uh, he. Yeah, but do you have a suggestion? We need a female DJ a headliner that is attracting a big audience. Well, how about your budget? Hmm. Not much left now. Okay, thank you. We have for this block also um, a visual uh, example from uh, the Wireless, Festi Wireless Festival in Finsbury Park. It's one of the biggest festivals in the UK and you're going to say something about this little project. Well, um, this came also through the mailing list uh, that I'm also part of from Female Pressure. Somebody sent it uh, through. Um, and attached was uh, were two posters, and uh, this is the original poster from the big uh, festival. Uh, I just had a look at the acts. It's like one of the biggest UK um, uh, festivals, and um, it's from this year exactly from uh, London. So you see all the the acts here. Um, yes, and now I would like to show you what Lily Allen. Uh, uh, she did a little uh, experiment with her Photoshop uh, at home and she took off all the um, male uh, names so that only the female name uh, just mm, are still there on the poster and she called it uh, the struggle is real and just sent it through the mailing list and I would like to show you the same poster just the female artists now. So this is just an example um, of um, like the common business of um, yeah the actual lineups. Yeah, the struggle is real. <laughs> um, I would also ask you guys now because especially no, you all try to maybe work in this field and um, work towards a more equal situation. So what do you think? Why is it so still, still today in 2018 that we have so few, although I feel that it's like um, promoted, that people are do making an effort and try to promote more female DJs. Why is it still like this in reality? Do you have any ideas or suggestions? Um, uh, usually when I look at, try to do a festival or produce a show, I'm looking at the artist and their content. I don't specifically look at if they're female or male, but predominantly it's been male. I think I've only in the past seven, eight years had uh, two or th three or the five acts that had female participants or lead roles. Um, especially in bands, uh, and uh, honestly, I wasn't really spending time looking for that. It's just usually the bigger female artists are very hard to reach. Or um, if we're not we're not talking about just DJs, we're talking about participants in other other fields of the arts, um, and um, it's actually really hard to book them too because they're wanted in so many lineups so a lot of the times you can't actually get all of the female artists that you're looking for and um, hence the, the the debate of oh we remember last minute who do you know and where it's free because they usually blow their money on the bigger acts and then they don't have any budget left for the rest um, but to refer back to uh, uh, this poster there's actually three female artists that she forgot to keep 
that were on the list, <laughs> for example. On the, this, uh, this poster, there was Cardi B, which is a female, and there was Lisa Malone, which is a female, and there's, so sometimes uh, people confuse the artists, and um, a lot of the times people book, uh, the females have ma male DJ names, and you don't know if they're a male or DJ or female until they send the passport after you finish the booking, which is a good thing. Sometimes, maybe you wanna try that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's happened, I think in Berlin there was an, a, a DJ, I can't remember where she was from, but no one was booking her as a female artist and then she put another DJ name and would only show up at stage and people would know she's male or didn't know she was a female for a long time. And she was getting all the shows that way. Still, six, six on the yeah, poster yeah, yeah. is not a group. Yeah, no, big I, I, thing, I agree. So. But I, uh, from more of a booking and production, it's uh, it's very hard to find um, uh, uh, like information about a lot of the female artists that are touring. And I think I mentioned it in um, in the messages. A lot of the time, uh, a lot of the females still don't have the freedoms that male uh, males do in general. So that's where the trap is. So we're not just talking about touring artists. Some of them are mothers or not even have to be like mothers. They, they still have issues with their home. They still don't have their freedoms at home. They still can't have the capability to do this or that. And it's, that's where they fall in that group. Uh, so you mean there's less um, possibility to book female artists because they have more obligations that Obligations them from in many cases around the world, we forget that this is just the West. The rest of the world is still yeah. struggling with the whole topic of women. So um, a lot of them don't, you know, don't go out at night to a certain curfew. So how are they supposed to leave and tour the world with other artists or even in their own country? Okay, so, so yeah, it's yeah. really good that you make this clear because um, you are really working in a different um, cultural environment, I yeah. would say. So um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, and it's it's a whole other it's a whole other ball game. But at the same time, there are the ones that do these things, and they are the rebels or you know, feminists or whatever. But uh, they still, um, it's still not, uh, yeah, it's a different kind of, it's a different kind of fight that's there. But at the same time, the good thing about it is that sometimes you can play this new character of this is what I'm gonna do or this is what it is. And since you don't fit in the norm of your society or you don't fit in the norm in the artist category, then you just do what you are and hope for the best with that. <laughs> Thank you. Do maybe, uh, Emilia, because I you also remember. work in a club or you fo founded a club, uh, did you have discussions about your booking policy there or? Mm, yes, we had discussions too, but um, we started as a collective and we were kind of conscious about this topic. It's not ideal, but it's okay in EFZ, I would say. And I was thinking about the uh, topic that um, often is said that there are not enough female artists. I would say that's not true. <laughs> we have a lot of databases that show that, um, but I think the problem often is that they never come to the headliner point because they get not booked so much as the males because I found it really funny that the bookers always ask the female bookers, hey, can you tell me some women, female artists? Because I always ask myself, hey, don't you have friends or women who all also play? Bec why do you have only men DJs, uh, male DJs playing? So at first they should ask what kind of network they have, because often it is a network thing. It's not that they just check the SoundCloud yeah. stuff. They often book their friends. So where are the women there? And so that's the point that a lot of women play and are DJs or producers, but they don't come to a higher point. So it's really important that the bookers really push mm -hmm. female DJs and start to book them. And not only because they are female, also listen to the music and yeah. And also create some kind of um, substantiality, like some continuity, right? That yes. you don't forget your female DJ friends, not just invite them once, but uh, have them on your network list, yes. right? Yeah. Right, that's yeah. a good point, yes. Yeah. 
I must say, I mean, uh, when I started to work for this li the lineup for this year, Fusion, I really didn't think about, okay, we should insert more female eggs, but of course was one topic, because we were like, okay, let's try to no? find good DJ and uh, live eggs, uh, female, because we want to have them. Um, and in the research, it's more difficult. Uh, you have to look more. You find very interesting thing. But the profile of these artists is often not so like outstanding, like the male uh, profiles. And I don't know, like uh, maybe that uh, you have to be pushing this business to come up, no? Like, um, and I have no idea if there is something there. Like why, um, for some few plays on some cloud, few like you don't have a Facebook page. You don't want to do promotion, and this sometimes is the case of the female, or happened to me to notice that. But I'm, I'm, I'm not, I have no idea if it's <laughs> at the end a rule, or it was just a coincidence. Just to understand, so you checked, when you checked the profiles, you found that the female uh, non-binary profiles, exactly. they were less... It was more like a word of mouth. If someone mm -hmm. told me, hey, there is this girl, mm -hmm. she's doing really cool stuff but she's not present so much on the web mm -hmm. uh, like a male guy that is actually playing the same quality, but... But would you say this is something that the artist should do by herself or is it a job of the promo promotion agency? If she has one, is there also like... I the think there are always steps and I think when you're starting, uh, of course you have to do it by yourself. Yeah. So you, don't, you can't uh, expect to have an agent because you cannot pay. So you have to do it by yourself. And I don't know if in this aspect, maybe a female are a bit like, not so pushy, like the guys. Okay, so this is a topic about uh, how to you market yourself, yes. how you position yes. yourself and how much work you put inside and maybe also the self-esteem exactly. question, right? Exactly. Like when do I think I am professional and when do I, don't, when, uh, do I not have this confidence? Exactly. Yeah. Like it's not enough to stay in your studio, produce really cool music, if you don't scream to the world that you're doing it. So, yeah. Is there, s if, do you still have some things to add here, or should we go on with the... Okay, I find this really interesting, and I would like to talk with you already. Are you already have something. Okay. Um, actually, we do the Q&A later. Is that okay? Yeah? Cool. <laughs> but don't forget it. Yeah, um, I think we continue with our plan and uh, now uh, go to the last section of lectures. And um, this is about the future, the maybe female uh, future. So we asked also for already developed strategies how to cope with the sexist structures um, and situations. In my experience, female participation is something that I have to push myself into the conversation. For example, we are talking now with my record label about the choice of remixers for my album and of course all ideas coming from them are men. I had to put my foot down and tell them it's important to me to give work to female producers and that's not discussable. It was accepted by very easily once proposed but it had to come from me. It's still not industry's reflex. A friend is booking for parties at a bigger club in Germany. She has lots of requests of male DJs who want to play again. To face the under underrepresentation of female in the booth actively, she had the idea to ask the DJs, many of them friends, to connect, name and bring along at least one female or queer artist if they want to play at the venue. Her experience what that was that there were guys who had said something like, sorry, would like to, but cannot think of anyone. One of them happened to be a person who I knew, and I'm sure he is, he is quite well connected to a female DJ friend of mine. She's already professional, and they have played on the same, uh, on the same event several times in the last years. I guess that he was not really into it or just didn't think of her or was just not interested in the whole idea at all. I don't know if the idea worked in the end, but she told me about it. She was irritated but that the feedback was rather lame at the beginning. Still, it might be an approach. Wichtig finde ich, unsere männlichen Artists in einen Prozess der kritischen männlichen einzubinden. 
Hilfe leisten, was sie als Cis tun können bzw. Reflexion anregen. Wir brauchen mehr Cis-Feministen. Ich hoffe, dass die Leute unsere, unseren Artists arbeiten, mit unseren Artists arbeiten, weil sie diese gut finden und nicht nur, weil sie Titten haben. Okay, thank you so much. These were like three possibilities how maybe we can um, find strategies to change these structures. I find it really interesting already in this last um, round here that um, there seems to be in this booking sphere, yeah, at some point, like maybe difficulties to find female artists, but on the other hand, there's also the possibility that there are female artists, but maybe they are not. I don't know, promotioning themselves properly. I don't know, we can also discuss this. What does it mean to promote yourself and um, yeah, who makes the decisions and how much work do we have to put in this decision making? Because you also said it's like harder to find female artists, but maybe it's also part of the work as a booker to like make this effort until things have changed. Um, Yeah, there was already a question in the audience, and I don't know, there should be somebody from content with a microphone. Is she there? Yeah. Ah, there she is, yeah. So maybe one mic from stage. Ah, she have one. Okay, cool. So we will now uh, start with this. Hello. Thank you for this uh, panel. I think it's a very good uh, opportunity to, to connect. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, because you are doing the booking for Kultur Cosmos, if there is some kind of quota on this festival um, regarding the, the booking you are doing regarding gender. You mean uh, like uh, scientific, <laughs> like no, sitting I mean down and uh, saying, okay, we want uh, this uh, number of uh, DJ. Uh, no, there is not. Okay. And I'm not sure there should be one. Yeah, because I think that's a very important thing to discuss also, quotas yes, in yes. general. <laughs> totally. Do you think it's a good, would you think it's a good strategy? So from my own experience, I think um, if you have this quota, yeah, you, you have this rule and you have to achieve it somehow. And also we were talking so much about making female artists more present, thinking about your female friends first, not spending all your budget on male artists or big headliners, whatever. And I think all these things are also included once you have a solid <laughs> quota of uh, female or non-binary acts. It's very true, but it's also true that you lose a bit of uh, not the natural way to do it, no? So at one point, to reach this quota, maybe you select someone that is not really matching. Um, so it's up to you to be a bit more like flexible, maybe. Okay, say 20 artists, female, okay, but we can get uh, 25 or 15. Yeah, I think that's the big dilemma we are talking about also, because I mean, there were also these experiences of um, female acts getting booked only because they are female. And I also know how bad this feels uh, or this feeling. And um, yeah, if you have this quota, maybe this is also one effect of this or, yeah, I don't know what to do. I think it's, um, it's a dilemma we are into, but thank you for organizing the panel. <laughs> Okay, maybe because speaking of quota, you could add something from your experience as well at Maya. Um, the last uh, years, I I worked a bit in the um, program for Mensch Meyer in Berlin, and uh, in the beginning we were also uh, talking about that uh, probably the same discussions you had at EFZ, I guess. <laughs> Um, if, if a quota is uh, good or not, if it's necessary, it's a good idea or a bad idea. I think it's, uh, uh, there are pros and cons. And the biggest uh, pro is, like you say, you have to achieve it somehow. And the worst is that you only think about gender regarding artists. So it's, it's, a, it's really a thing. Um, At Menschmeier, there is, um, if you work together with crews, then uh, in the beginning of the 
Abspracheprotokoll. What is that in English? The, <laughs> the deal, like part of the deal, uh, part of the contract uh, you're gonna sign. Um, there is written, uh, we do want to have um, a diverse um, lineup and we want to include um, female trans non-binary artists. And in the last years, it, it also happened. Um, as a crew, like they didn't book, I think any any female artist, and then we said to them, "Well, this is a problem. Can you do something because you need to change it?" And they said, "No, booking is done." <laughs> and then we said, "Okay, then we book ourselves uh, uh, some people in here, and you have to like get rid of some slots." Sorry, so we never worked again together. <laughs> um, I would also like to add something um, as a DJ. I made the experience that um, as I like went on, on in my career, <laughs> if I can say, um, I had uh, male um, friends that took me into their network and they booked me on the best spots and um, that was a big opportunity because I always played at the techno floor at two at night. So a lot of people saw me and then other people uh, booked me again. So and they also always proposed me as an artist. And I'm really thankful for that. And I think it's not normal still. And I think this is like for me, uh, like a very, very big thing that is a big problem as I see it from my point of view. And this is also because this friend, uh, we have like a friend, colleague, music interest uh, relationship. And it's not about that I'm like, we don't have this, how can I say? He don't want to book me because he wants to fuck me. It's, uh, it's more about uh, like working together. And I think that also that can happen that, uh, I mean, it can happen in other way around also, I mean, hmm? but if this is kind of mixed up the interest of somebody, then it's all about power. And then you get this problem starting. If you have this network and you kind of have this friendship colleague thing working, then it's a different thing. And I think this is what we should aim for. And together with female, male, trans, non-binary, whatever artists. And that's my personal goal. Yeah. Is there uh, already another question from the audience? There are two hands here. I think first maybe the white shirt uh, and then, yeah, <laughs> and then the black shirt and hat. So, if it's okay, I would like to share two observations that I make as a male booker working in the field. And uh, I've been, since about five years, working a lot on also pushing female artists into uh, bigger slots, actually. And I have to say that in Berlin, luckily, it has never been difficult to find outstanding female artists. So, the situation is actually really, really cool. Um, so I wanted to touch about something that Asya said about uh, being pushy, that being part of the job as a DJ. And um, I get a lot of Facebook messages and emails from white men that write me, here, uh, I love your festival, uh, can I play there, this is my sound. And if they write nicely, uh, then I will listen to it. And usually it's very boring music, but sometimes it's not, and then I will consider this for a booking. And I never once got such an email or message from a female artist. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. You can just do that. And sometimes it works. And um, yeah, the other point about uh, self-promotion, of course, can be a choice not to self-promote and then and to, to say, uh, I'm just underground and uh, I just rely on word of mouth. But then probably you will only play at the parties of your friends. And if you want to reach more like primetime spots in big festivals, one of the main questions that a booker will ask himself or herself is, does this artist bring her crowd to the floor? And uh, if I see that like a SoundCloud profile is very, like has only 70 followers and there's no Facebook page, then I, I assume 
that um, the person has no channels to con communicate to her crowd, and then it's a it's a risky booking. So um, then I will be not like ready to to invest or to like take the risk and look for another artist. Thank you so much. Is there somebody saying yeah? Uh, to that point, I want to ask you. Um, yeah, it's important to uh, watch the numbers, how many people are listening to it. But actually, the the point is, what music is this person person doing, and do you like it? And as a booker, if you like something and you think it's good to push it because the people also like it, then I ask myself, why is it important? How many? Um, Counts or uh, followers the person has on SoundCloud, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a booker, I only book acts that I love the music, because otherwise it, there's no point in it, you know. So this is the first thing I look for. But then when I ask, a, like, if I plan a party or festival, I know I want this number of people also on the floor and being happy at a certain time. And for that, I also have, like, this gives me some safety, especially if I'm booking someone that I don't know personally, that I don't know if they have, like, a standing in my scene, if I'm bringing someone from another city. So if there's, like, no personal connection but just the music, um, this is just some of the questions that are part of the business. Money, money. Uh, Emilia? Um, yes, I understand that part that you want to know how famous is the artist, but I want to say that you that we all should be aware that you can also buy the numbers and the followers and often men do this. I know that and I think that's really to criticize just look after those numbers. Yeah, yeah I find it a very interesting thing that we are talking now. Um, or did you want to say something? No, sorry. <laughs> because uh, we started with the scenes today of like the DJ life or the artist life uh, from a female non-binary perspective where it's all about not being taken seriously and I wonder if this how much does it have to do with like for example the counts or the the way how you go into the business as an artist and um, yeah what you think will will what you think you will find I guess and I, I would think that as a female person stepping into the music business you would probably have other things you imagine that will happen to you than as being a male DJ or something. And maybe this has something to do with this question of how, how people promote themselves. Uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there, there was this question. Of Sorry, um, do you don't want to, it is different, different uh, content? Sorry, I forgot your name. You, uh, who? Yeah. Shermin. Shermin. Sh yeah. You you said that many of the party organizers in the field where you work or in the countries where you work are female. Uh, specifically in Jordan, um, there's a big female, from like young females to like older generation that but are also doing things. But at the same time, the numbers are quite the same if it comes to male-female participation? The participation is different because when it comes to booking, because I personally produce shows and festivals, I also book and manage artists and content. So it depends on which role I'm playing. So if I'm producing and booking... No, sorry. no, sorry, you misunderstood me. Yeah. So many of the party organizers are female. Correct. And many of the acts are still male. So the numbers yes. are quite similar, you say. Correct. Okay. The, yeah. This doesn't get doesn't doesn't intrigue to me. I, I don't get it. <laughs> um, why, why? why? Because we're female. We have to book females. I'm kind of not into the whole. You know. What do you? I'm not understanding the question. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's just. Is there wrong. a question? <laughs> maybe that's just. Maybe that's just wrong thinking from my side. But I always thought like the music business is very. A relation focus, you book who you know, and there's a lot in friend circles and this kind of stuff. And I always thought a big part of the problem is that a lot of the bookers are male, a lot of the club owners are male. And I thought if this level of management would change, it would have a big influence of the female participation. Yeah, well, I think the a lot of the females that are, I'm going to speak about myself and, and others, some of them, that the older generation, are actually looking at big acts that will bring people. So Jordan is still a very fresh market. Like you've probably heard a lot about Dubai and Lebanon. Now Palestine's on the on the map, also bringing a lot of things. So Jordan's uh, known more for you know 
uh, being the safe haven for refugees. So our target and our the industry is not mainly for for music and entertainment. So the when some of the producers produce show, it's either to make money or to put, bring a major artist that people would know, like ridiculous names. Like this year, they're bringing Tom Jones. You know, it's like whoa, Tom Jones or J Lo. Like they get excited about booking something like that. But when we're talking about the independent music scene, which is the stuff that I'm more the field that I'm more into. Um, it's really about finding the artist that you want to book for a certain show and uh, in a lot of the cases um, it's much easier here because if I want to bring an artist to the Middle East sometimes they're so expensive because I have to fly, accommodate a whole crew and stuff. So we build uh, touring rigs and you have to convince other cities to get on board and then oh I want this artist or whether it sells tickets or doesn't sell tickets is a, is a, is a very important thing more than female or male. So if I'm going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to try to bring an artist that no one's going to know, it's not going to really sell. So collectively, as uh, bookers and producers in the Middle East and the Gulf and Northern Africa, where we align to try to find acts that are a bit older that some of us know, or uh, some things that are upcoming and in the, in, in the media, but it's uh, unaffordable for sure. Because otherwise, it's quite expensive. You, you guys get to see artists every other day and every single stage. We don't have these opportunities, and it's much uh, more difficult that way. I think it's a very, um, what you said, like change the management and um, make it female. Um, I would also, if you uh, say it like that, it's it seems to me like, yeah, would be something different. But then it's a different thing. So I think um, I also would like to uh, maybe ask a question. It's not only about the music business. I think we're talking about like other topics. Like it's it's a deeper deeper root and thing. Really, we started this panel. We had this idea, and we had no idea where that leads to. Because you can sit here and you can complain about like oh it's really bad and na na na. And we didn't want to complain with the scenes. We just wanted to illustrate it how it is. It's just daily things. So we are here to, to sit here and discuss about it because I really have no idea how really to change it. And I'm like, there are strategies, yeah. But um, it doesn't feel like also the numbers, like um, it's six years now um, that the, the fact uh, study from female pressure is taken. And there's an increase of 5%. But it's not much, and I think the topic is all over. Like people are talking about it all the time. I have the feeling, and I'm I'm in the booking thing myself, and still I I don't have the perfect strategy how to do it. So we are here also to maybe go deeper into the topic, and maybe maybe it's more about that. I don't know if somebody of you wants to say something to that too. I think there's one. Karina? Um, I also think it's very naive to say, just hook me up when you're a female um, artist, because we are raised so much different than a male. We are not raised to stand up for ourselves like maybe you were. And um, we are raised to take us to the background and um, don't be that aware of what we are doing. So. I don't know, I don't think that if I still make music, I would go to a male booker and say, hey, listen to my stuff, because I think I'm very awesome, even though I think I'm awesome. Because that's not happening. We are not, in this society, it's just not uh, not reality. Thank you, yeah, he wants, uh, yeah. do you want to say something? Yeah, just to that point and that what you said, this is also a deeper question, why are women not in the situation that they go to a booker and say, hey, listen to my music, I want to play here. Why is that so? And this is like a deeper point, I think, where we could go, uh, what is not like, okay, music biz and no, no, no. It's more the question, why are we so, 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 sologized? Sologized? Socialized? Uh, that we don't um, go to the people and say, hey, uh, I want to play there and uh, I like my music and uh, listen to it. 
Ah, there's a question. Yes. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I have uh, one mm -hmm. on my own. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm going for it. Do it. Um, because about this, um, that's what she said, like, we're not raised to, to do this or something. And then they're like, yeah, you should do the same things like the guys do. And I really hate that because it's just, it means like, try to be like a guy. Um, I think it makes much more sense to find a middle way which works for everybody and not like tell the women that you have to behave like a male if you want to achieve something, if you want to persist in a male-centric industry. Um, because this means like the male way, like being aggressive, being progressive is the only possible one. I know obviously for jobs like this, it's, it's about marketing and stuff, but there's other ways, there's other ways to get um, available. And I really give, want to give a short con um, info, uh, which is perhaps interesting for you, because in IT, like, uh, we have this problem with finding speakers, females. And there is a group which started a project called speakerinnen.org, speakerinnen um, which is where you can just sign up and put in your stuff and your experience and like videos of talks which you gave like here stuff and then people can find you because I don't believe that there's not good artists, speakers, whatever there because they are there. There's no reason why there should be less than 50% good people. Even perhaps it's not exactly 50 now but the, it's, it's never, it, it sounds like a stupid excuse to say I couldn't find somebody good and I took somebody bad instead. It's just you didn't look good enough, or didn't look hard enough, perhaps, and perhaps you need some help. But I don't believe that somebody says, I couldn't find anybody. I mean, in, in John, I, I believe it's, it's a hard thing with far traveling and stuff, but in Germany, if somebody says, I can't find a good female DJ, <laughs> I, I don't believe that. Thank this you. This is lazy. <laughs> so. We do find, and they do come, but it's, you know. Thanks, yeah. Okay, there's this question, yeah? Uh, well, you kind of said what I wanted to say, but um, I think it's not asking why are we socialized like this or why is it like this, but rather saying how can we empower everybody to, to, to um, act differently and to be able to act differently. And maybe the thing is to say um, how can we create platforms that, like you just said, that make it easier for the bookers because it seems to be a big problem. Maybe it's a real problem, but then how can we, yeah, how can we empower people to, to be present? Not, and maybe not in, a, in an individual way, but in a collective way. So th I think this is a re really good example. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that what you were talking about is um, I think we should talk about the patriarchy and capitalism, just to name it, because all things we just said about and talked about is just the system, which is fuck. <laughs> Fucked up, so I think it's also really important to talk about the social structures in general because it's not only in the music scene, it's everywhere. And why is it like that and what do we have to change social? I know it's a really big topic, so it's really hard to change this, but we have to go deeper in this, I would say. And yeah, let's try and analyze and discuss, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, I also wanted to ask if there's no hand risen at the moment. Yeah, okay, but now I will first pose my question. <laughs> um, uh, Emilia, because you, co may, um, you founded this collective and I guess that it's also a strategy to be part of this music industry mm -hmm. and I would love to hear a little bit more how you decided to do this and what happened since. Um, we started with a row of events and um, we did some workshops and showed a movie and had also a networking uh, panel. And from this point we had many women who said, oh, we want to meet and want to discuss and want to share experiences. So that's when we started as a collective because the first meeting, I think we were like 50 women. 50, yes. Uh, it changes from every meetings, but yeah, and now we are like 15 uh, um, who are doing, yeah, constantly. And we also decided to write a manifest, 
I don't know how to call it in English, but yeah, we, we also thought about, okay, we have always these experiences, we always talk about it a lot, but we want to change something, so we have to think about it politically. Because if you want to change something, we have to fight together. We cannot only do it by our own, because it's a social problem. And so we yeah, decided to write this manifest and also to find out um, yeah, the social problems and to find political strategies. And now we are at this point, so yeah, hopefully <laughs> we will uh, publish it once, <laughs> uh, yeah, after some months. So yeah, I think it's good to come together and yeah, also to talk with the men or the males because we need them also, not only with the women alone. It's sometimes it's nice to talk alone, but also yeah, to fight together, also non-binary, trans, inter, yeah, all together. What is it exactly, um, just to understand it right, what you are doing with the collective, what you're aiming at? You want to do events or...? Um, now we, we meet and discuss and also we are organizing events. But um, yeah, we just meet and talk. We have different uh, Arbeitsgruppen. Working groups. Working groups. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have different topics, so li like we talk about what can we practically do, like we need more uh, female securities and awareness at parties, we need like the booking part, and we need also female technici technicians, and as all this working field is really big, um, like in the club or in the music industry where you don't have women or females, so we have to change this also. And then we also want to read um, texts, texts, and yeah, because there were a lot of women who already thought about it, like in the 17th or before, they all had the same discussion. It's really sad sometimes to read the old texts and see that they had the same problems, it didn't change. So maybe to start with this, so, do, so you don't have to think about it again because you have this material. And then yeah, we have to change society at the end. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Connected to this before uh, you get the mic, I also would like to remind our uh, us on the to the title of the um, panel when she talks I hear the revolution because as I said in the beginning it's a right girl song and the right girl movement is something that happened in the beginning of the 90s as an answer to the very male dominated punk um, scene, yeah, so that was like a time where the bands were male, the punk bands, and the females were like the groupies, and at some point the right girl movement formed to um, yeah, to do it themselves, and they really have this DIY thing in, the, or they had, have, I don't know, this DIY idea that they all can do it, girls can also play guitar and can also uh, perform on stage without any borders and um, for me this is something that I find a really good um, forebuild, role model uh, movement yeah and something like uh, your collective or maybe yeah just to meet up talk with each other and then open up again I think it's a really good strategy there was this question. yeah you want to ask the question So just uh, when we're talking about strategies, I think one thing that is possible, uh, as long as the decision-making positions in the scene are dominated by white boys like me, um, is to find, like identify who are potential male allies also, not to view everyone as, as like antagonists in this, and also turning people into allies. And there's different ways how to do it and it depends on where, where you are, like how established you are, but if you have like friends who are guys and who are uh, DJs, you can like uh, just raise the issue with them and see if they're like receptive to this. So one, one thing I do, for example, is if I get invited as a DJ to play at a party and I see it's an all-male lineup, then I say, look, um, don't you think this is a little weird now in 2018? And maybe you wanna, and then I usually suggest someone from my uh, surroundings and say, this is a really cool sound, it would fit your party. So you could, could bring more do, DJs to do that. But also if you know other bookers of other festivals, you can just 
yeah, talk to them more. It would have been nice to see some of my male colleagues here, actually. And, yes, um, yeah. I, I, I would just tell you, I, I, I just wanted to tell you, I invited a lot of people. I invited a lot of male bookers that I also know from Fusion Festival. I know like, from different floors. I invited really a lot. I did a lot of work with that. And I don't see a lot of them here right now. <laughs> and uh, this is also something we can think about. I mean, uh, the topic is hot and uh, yeah. But uh, we can go on with the question. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask you to what you do. Um, does that actually work a lot? Or how often does it work that they actually accept your uh, offer of taking a friend, a female? I think now because the, the topic is so hot, usually they're very thankful for the suggestion. So a lot of times it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like, but yeah, in, in the cases when I'm invited to play, like it, it worked out, yeah. Another question? <laughs> Is it allowed to share a story instead of asking a question? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I think it's very important what Emilia said, that we have to get the men into the boat. It sounds very German. Uh, and I, have to, I want to share a story which, which happened to me with a male friend of mine because I started to DJ. Thank you. <laughs> and I had my very first gig. And I had a friend coming with me, he got his guest list and I was happy he was with me because I thought he would empower me. And uh, he got wasted, which is okay, I think, but, <laughs> but actually he missed my gig. And uh, uh, later on he got even more wasted and when I was done and I found him, he told me, oh, you could have done better. And I told him, you haven't been there. <laughs> he heard the first track and then he was gone. And uh, I was so upset and then half an hour later he forgot about it, that he told me that. So what I want to say with this story is it's really deep. It's not happening in a even male friend's mind that I did something not good enough. It's from here because he forgot it. It's something really, really deep in his body. I have to tell my friend Judith uh, she did bad and he didn't even hear it. And I told him about it, and this is what you told us here too. Speak up, because he feel very ashamed when I told him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I would like to motivate everyone just to speak up. <laughs> speak up! <laughs> you <love> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just before, oh, yeah, okay. Um, there are also other uh, examples, um, like um, a mixer who's um, like together mixing with a female mixer, like a male and a female mixer. And they were together uh, at a festival and uh, she wanted to do, do the mixing and the people were always like uh, addressing him. What cable, what can we, how can we plug it, da da da. And he was supporting her and said, I don't know, I'm just the assistant, ask her, she's doing the mixing. And then it happened again. Uh, where can we plug it? Can you tell me? Da, da, da? And then again, sorry, I don't know. She is doing the mixing. And then at the third time, they got it. So this is also a strategy to support. This is also something um, that's part of this debate when we're talking about DJing, right? That it's something that is perceived as quite a technical thing. And this is what society prescribes as being something male, right? So maybe we should also not forget this notion and this is what uh, uh, is happening in the stories you told us in the beginning a lot. That once there is a female behind the decks, uh, like, yeah, it's too technical, so uh, it's not re being regarded as her ability. You wanted to say something. Yes, I just realized because I'm not part of the music biz at all. I'm just audience. And I realized maybe we also have a, we can also speak up and just speak about good female artists that we've seen and just talk about them more because everybody has to make them more visible. And it's, they don't need to promote themselves, but we can promote them as well. Awesome. <laughs> There's one question more. We have like five more minutes to go. Yeah. Um, I have two things. One thing is um, as we talk about strategies, 
um, that we have to begin from the button up because um, you have to learn all these things. You, um, I um, came from the punk community and I play in bands um, like 15 years and um, I um, do the drums but um, I don't know other um, girls who play drums or guitar before and I play with friends, uh, male friends often and so um, I think uh, we do a, a lot of workshops in, um, uh, no, um, as we do um, something like workshop um, festivals or something, we do, um, uh, it's called Le Claim the Stage in um, Mülheim in the Ruppert area and um, so we do DJing workshops and um, workshops for technicians and um, also for instruments so we learn and we um, connect each other and uh, we support each other and um, that's the other thing that um, sometimes, uh, it's, I think, um, I don't know, um, like it is in DJ context, but um, when there are girls or women, um, they don't um, support each other. They are just, um, okay, I'm here, so, um, I'm here alone, and so um, I don't want to speak with, I think, younger women, or um, I don't know you, so I, uh, I don't care. And you know the point? Um, yeah, it's yes. about being it's uh, about solidarity, yes. uh, solidarity with each other point, instead of yeah. trying to, I'm on my own way alone and yes, I want to, is. yeah. There's a question on the far left of the audience. Oh, on the far right also, sorry, <laughs> now you have to run. Um, hey, uh, thank you for doing this, it's really, it's really nice and it's really nice to hear. Uh, all these different perspectives. Um, I, I hope this is not too off topic, but it's more of a statement. Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, a little bit closer. Is that better? <laughs> all right. Um, <clears throat> so I hope this is not a little bit off topic, but I think that uh, like human equality is very important. And I think, for example, what like for for male bookers working together with uh, female artists and female bookers to create that kind of equality, especially equal pay for equal work. Um, I think that not only men should work with women, but uh, also with race, because I noticed a lot all over Europe, and even in the US, because I'm from the US, that it's not enough, and I think that everyone should be standing up for everyone. Thank you so much for this uh, yeah. comment. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. I'm very grateful for that. And um, as we were speaking about strategies, I just wanted to say that I, I also think that um, we definitely do have to teach men to regard themselves feminists. Yay! <laughs> And speaking of that, uh, I also want to, to use the opportunity to make some little advertisement because we will have this other talk later on at nine, uh, half past nine this tonight here, which is going to be about Farm Rebellion Festival, which is another, um, uh, uh, another attempt to, to, to change something in the music business regarding this issue. Thank you, Lat. Thank you so much. Uh, is there one more urgent thing to say the camera person you want to say something is that okay for everybody any anybody else who wants to say something no okay hi i just want to mention the uh, about blank as a positive example in berlin because you have uh, technicians djs you have everywhere everybody so i think it's a very good example how it could work and that it's possible you have uh, are you from about blank because you have a quote there, but I think it's only one female DJ per night. No, um, I did a documentary okay. there, but uh, ah, okay. so I just... Uh, no, no. <laughs> Would have been interesting. Yeah, but thanks. Yeah. Quick, the other question or over? Okay, over. <laughs> what I have to say, that, that's really th something. If you are searching for a DJ, artist, whatever, then go to female pressure database 
uh, there you can have a look because you can filter by city. Let's say uh, Berlin, you are looking for a techno DJ, no problem. Um, I think it's now around 25 pages of uh, female, non-binary and trans DJs. You have a lot of possibilities to hear new interesting stuff. So. Um, this is something, a strategy that you can also uh, suggest to other male bookers when they complain that they don't find anything. It's a little bit work, I know, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, yeah, a big applause for everybody on stage and off stage. Thank you. <laughs> so this was... This was just the start maybe, or I don't know, I guess a lot of you guys are s talking about this topic anyway, and we would like to encourage you to go on talking about it, and we already collected a lot of strategies and try to include them your, in your fan life and your work life, <laughs> depending on which part you are in the music biz. And um, you wanted to say something about something that's happening right now, right? I wanted to uh, give a quick invitation, or you, you want to do it? I do it? Okay. Um, because the next talk, um, um, the, the speaker is a little bit, uh, or she's really sick, so she couldn't come. And now we have uh, some time, and we thought about to go into action. And I would like to invite you to join us, because we would like to do an action together. We're going to start uh, to meet here soon. Eight, half past eight around. We want to create a group and we want to go all just with pants and no shirts on. And we want to be a big group all together, male, female, whatever, doesn't matter. And we go all topless uh, through Fusion Festival because um, the reason is that uh, there's a big discussion also uh, at the festival. Uh, about topless guys, yes, no, why? And uh, the thing is that um, we want to bring a point on that, that I can't be on stage, for example, uh, topless, because then I just have to do with all the harassments, and um, um, guys can do it. So we want to join together. I invite you that we create uh, fun together and just uh, do it. So let's meet here at 8. Thank you. So, this was our panel. Thank you very much. Um, this was Alisa, Asia, Emilia, Shermain, uh, Yala, and Fina, and Sonic. So, thank you very much. This was amazing.